welcome back to my channel, Side Hustle Seattle. So today I wanna to give you a beginner's tutorial of one of the best free online scheduling tools you can use, and that's Calendly. So if you don't know what Calendly is, all it is is a free online appointment scheduling software that you can use to book things like appointments, meetings, and events without the back and forth hassle of going through things like email and text. Now Calendly is something that I use for my notary business from the beginning, and I can honestly say that it has made my life as a small business owner significantly easier and has taken the guesswork out of scheduling my clients. Now Calendly has a paid version and it has a free version. For the sake of this video, we are going to be talking about the free version. Now I don't wanna to talk too much as far as this lead up goes, I just wanna get right into it and show you what it has to offer so you can see if this is right for your business as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so this is the homepage of Calendly right here. So very clean, very simple design to it just from the homepage. But to sign up, you're gonna go ahead and just put your email in right there. Use whatever email you want, click sign up. When you do, it's gonna ask you if you wanna connect it to a Gmail, just because it makes it a lot more seamless. So I went ahead and signed up with Google. And then it's just gonna have you select an account if you have multiple Gmail accounts. So I selected the one I wanna use. And you can go and actually customize the URL for your Calendly. So because I'm making it for the channel, I went ahead and just put Side Hustle Seattle on it, but you can change that later, which I will show you. So go ahead and put something that's memorable so whoever your clients are will know it's you. Now on the next page, it's gonna ask if you want to connect your calendar. Now that's great because if somebody schedules an appointment, a meeting, whatever, they'll automatically pop on your calendar and they'll work around whatever is currently on your calendar so there's no scheduling conflicts. So go ahead and connect those. And then right here, you can set up your default availability for when you're available to accept meetings, but we're gonna do that later. So I'm gonna go ahead and click set up later for right now. Now here's where you can kind of tell tell them what kind of work you're doing to help them tailor the experience. It honestly doesn't really matter. So go ahead and just click education. So don't stress out about this, just select whatever you'd like, click finish. Now it's going to take you to the homepage. So before we really dive into the homepage, let's make sure we go in and set up our account. So we're gonna go and actually set up our account and just go to account settings from there. Okay, so here's the profile page. Now this is where you wanna tell people a little bit about you because this is what they're going to see when they click on your page. So I put my name, Side Hustle Seattle. You could put a welcome message. You can set up your language, you know, your time zone, all of just the basic information. You do wanna make sure you put a profile picture because when people schedule an event, they wanna make sure it's you. Now typically you should put a face shot, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put my YouTube logo. Go ahead and apply that. Double check everything, make sure it looks okay which it does, and then you wanna scroll down. You wanna make sure you always save your changes. Now, next thing is the branding. Now, this is where you really should be putting your logo and things like that. So I'll go ahead and add another logo to that just to customize a little bit for my brand. And I'll go ahead and put the other Side Hustle Seattle logo I have in there. Resize, save my changes. Now, if you go to my link, this is where you can edit your URL. So remember we set that up in the beginning, but if you'd like to change it, you can change that if you want to. Just be aware it negates all the previous links. Now, if you go to login, you can change what Gmail account it is connected to if you need to. Now, if we go back to the homepage, you're gonna see that they already put a meeting on there. It's just the default one they put when you sign up. You can delete that though. So let's go ahead and click into it. Let's delete it because we're gonna create a new event type from scratch so that way you can see how that looks. So that's deleted. So now we're actually gonna go down and go to new event type. Now you can choose what kind of event. Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it a group? Are you meeting with somebody else to host it with two people? In this case, we're gonna do one-on-one. -on -one. So you're gonna put the event name. Doesn't matter what you put, but you want it to be intuitive to what exactly people are signing up for. So let's just make it up and say that I'm doing a mentorship session. Awesome. Now you can also choose the location for how you're going to meet with the person. It's gonna be in-person, phone, Gmail, it's gonna be Zoom. There's so many different things that you can connect it to. I like that you can either customize it or ask the invitee how they would prefer to meet. But in this case, let's do Gmail since it's already connected to my calendar. Google Meets just makes sense. 
and then go ahead and just add a description for whatever the event is. I'll just throw something in there. Yeah, sounds about right. Now the event link. So of course you have your URL for your Calendly in general, but you can also have a custom URL for the event itself. It's gonna to default to the name of the event, so I'll just leave that in there for now. It seems like that makes the most sense. And you can even customize what color the event shows up as. Purple's my favorite color, so I'll go ahead and just keep that there. Click next. Okay, so you can get really specific about how you want people to schedule. So you can have people, they can schedule within a certain amount of time in the future, within a date range, or indefinitely. So you can schedule, let's say, 60 calendar days in the future, or even just business days, which of course are just Monday through Friday. I'll keep it calendar days, but I don't want people to be able to schedule out too far, so I'll make it a little bit shorter and just do 30 days for now. That seems like it makes sense. You can also say how long is the event going to be or the meeting or the appointment. So mentorship session, yeah, about 45 minutes sounds about right, so I'll go ahead and click that. But you can make it all the way up to 12 hours. Now, when people can book that um, event itself, you can either do it based off your default availability that you put um, in the beginning, and I will show you later how to go back and actually change that. So if you scroll up and you go to availability, you can change your default availability. But in this case, we're going to do a custom one. So I'll show you how to do a custom one for the event itself. This right here is my default availability, but we're gonna set custom hours in this case. Okay, so this is what's currently the availability for this event, but I wanna customize it. So I'm gonna go into Saturday and I can edit it just for that Saturday or for all Saturdays. In this case, I'm just gonna edit for all Saturdays. So let's see. Let's edit all Saturdays and then let's click when I want to meet people. So let's do nine to like noon. And then I can even add a break. So I can put plus and then meet back up at let's say one to five. So I give myself about an hour for lunch. And then I can go ahead and apply that. And because I clicked all Saturdays, you can see it went down all of the Saturdays, which is great. And I can also go back and edit some other stuff. So I can edit Mondays and say, no, I don't wanna meet Mondays at all, so delete that off my calendar. I can do the same with Wednesdays. Wednesdays, don't wanna meet, delete that off. And you can do it per day, per type of days, per week. Whatever you'd like, you can customize it as you see fit. So this is the current availability for this specific event itself. Now when you scroll down, you can actually give yourself a buffer. So if you're like, I don't want back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back appointments, you can give yourself a, bu a buffer before and after the event itself. So in this case, you know, mentorship session, I need to reset, I need to regroup, so I'll give myself a buffer before and after. I'm gonna give myself 30 minutes before, and I'll give myself 30 minutes after. I feel like that makes sense. And you can do it whatever you'd like. Now, if you go to additional rules for your availability, you can get even more specific. You can show the increments for when people see time slots. Um, you can also do advance notice. So maybe you don't want appointments being able to be scheduled 30 minutes before they start. So you can change that to four hours, two hours, one hour, a certain amount of minutes. I'll do mine one hour. And you can even do the maximum allowed appointments per day. So that way you don't burn yourself out. So go ahead and put in whatever you'd like or leave it blank if you don't need it. Now in this section, it talks about the time zone. Now I suggest always keep on to default to the person, the invitee's time zone. That way they don't get confused about when you're meeting. So just keep on that. And if you wanna make a secret event, you can even do that and make a secret event. People just need that specific URL. There's some additional options that you can have. So you can do invitee questions. So when somebody signs up, they do have an option to leave a comment or a question before the meeting. Now it's gonna to default to one, but you can add a new question if you have something specific that you want people to answer. You can also change the way notifications and the cancellation policy shows up. So the way notifications are typically gonna happen is somebody schedules an event, it's automatically going to be thrown on their calendar, but you can switch that to email confirmation if you don't want it to be thrown on their calendar. You can also turn on email reminders, which I suggest, and text reminders if you think that is appropriate. If you want there to be a cancellation policy, let's say you own a salon, you can go ahead and put a cancellation policy so people know they can't cancel between a certain amount of time before the event starts. It's just up to you. I leave mine blank in this case. And the confirmation page, honestly, you probably won't be using this much. Most of the time you'll default to the Calendly one, but if you want it to redirect to an external page, you can change that if you'd like to. 
Now, one of the things I find clutch is the collect payments tab. So you can link it to a payment processing that you have. That way it's all seamless and in one place. And that's in the integrations page, which you will see last on this. But now that we know that the vent type is on, people can see it. Let's view the live page so you can see what people see. Okay, so this is what it looks like when somebody goes into the event. See the name of the session, the duration, general details, and they can click in and they can schedule. So they can say it's Saturday, the last time left is 4 p.m., or they can go on Tuesday and check out what times are available there. Doesn't matter, you can see when, every, when everything is available. And as people book, it'll set to your specifications. Now let's say that you made two events. What does it look like now? So if you go back to your main URL, if you have more than one event in there, it should show both events available. So now it's gonna show everything available. So let's say you have multiple things that you offer, people can see it in its entirety. So let's go to availability. So this is your default availability for when you're available, but again, you can specify directly in an event itself. Now my default availability is Monday through Friday, nine to five. I suggest going in here and setting any days you know you're not gonna be available. So if you know you're taking vacation, you know there's certain days you just hate to work, go ahead and mark those off so people aren't scheduling time when you're not there. I always like to do ahead as I know I have stuff coming up in my life and also doing it as things come up randomly. Now for the integrations tab, clutch. There are so many different ways that you can do integrations with Calendly. So you can do it with Google Chrome, you can do it with Zoom, Google Meets as we've seen, but the good thing is you can also do it with PayPal or Stripe. So like I said, you can integrate payments into Calendly directly. So if you have something that needs to be paid, maybe I'm charging for this mentorship session, you can go ahead and connect that directly through Stripe or PayPal, which I love and I use for my personal business. But when you get in here, make sure you take a look to see everything that it has to offer because like I said, it is actually a ton. And that is the end of the tutorial. Okay, so now that the tutorial is over, what did you think? Were the things that you liked about the software, things that you didn't like about the software? Is there another online appointment scheduling tool that you use that you swear by and you feel like people should know? If so, go ahead and just leave that in the comments. Also, if you would like to see me do a video where I compare the top five free online appointment scheduling software side by side, let me know as well and I'll go ahead and make that video. But anyways, thank you so much for watching as always and I will catch you in the next one.